last words will be said by the General Secretary of Breakthrough Science Society, Professor of Physics at the Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Professor Shomitra Banerjee. This was a historic occasion because never has a conference of this type been organized in India. This is the first time active professional scientists are discussing problems related to integrating science with society. This is a very important occasion. And I believe this conference will have a lasting effect. And that was the objective with which we, the Breakthrough Science Society, decided at one point of time to organize it. True, it was difficult, but with the help of everybody, we have been able to pull it through. But why did we do it? You see, we are practicing scientists, which means it is our business to grope in the dark, sometimes to see light at the other end of the tunnel, probe it farther, and unravel some law, some mystery, some working of nature. This is not only our profession, this is also our passion. Now, in doing so, the all-important thing is the method that we follow in finding the laws of nature, the method of science that is all-important. The method comes from an outlook. The way we look at the material world, that tells us how I will look at something that I do not know, how I will try to find something I do not know. So this world view, this approach is all important. And it goes without saying that when we have, we do the science ourselves or we train students in the act of doing science, they come from a society, they come with a mindset, they come with some philosophy in their mind, they, under, they may understand it or not, they do. And that is something that they cull from the society around them. Unless the majority thinking, the social thinking is scientific, science cannot really function in a fruitful way. And therefore, it is necessary to inculcate a scientific bent of mind among the major, major section of the population so that in future our science takes off. Science cannot flourish without engaging in a struggle with anti-science. Those who believe that science can be done cocooned in a laboratory, they are mistaken. No, it cannot be done. Because like it or not, the forces of anti-science will interfere in the way in which we do science. And increasingly that has been happening. Increasingly, the forces of anti-science has been interfering with the way we do science. And there has been a general feeling of discomfiture among the scientific community. It was expected that when we earned independence, we became an independent nation, supposedly able to figure out our own destiny. It was expected that the country will go in the direction where we educate a majority of our people, in fact, we educate all of the people, we give them a rational, scientific bent of mind, a clear outlook, so that they become proper men, able to serve the society. What actually happened is quite on the contrary. And it is also true that the, the, the political dispensations that have ruled India so far, they all share this responsibility. They didn't do. As a result, our education system is such that going through the whole of the education system, 
up to the highest level, one does not get a normal scientific bent of mind, a rational bent of mind. Ability to argue, ability to logic, even that is not properly obtained. It is becoming a, just a collection point of information. And in the society at large, we have hundreds of unscientific beliefs, superstitions, bigotry, obscurantism, that is what is really molding the mindset of our next generation. We have to understand that. And because of that, the science that we do in our country, however much we can, uh, we, we can pat each other's back, the fact is that the science coming out of India is way below what can be expected in a country with so many billions of people. Why? Because most of the people are scientifically illiterate in the sense that we do not know how to answer a question whose answer I do not know. In this situation, there was obviously a discomfiture, increasing discomfiture among the scientific community who, believe, who think that something needs to be done. And in this situation we found that in came a ruling political dispensation that actively started, not started, others were also doing it, but actively in an accelerated pace started countering science. They actively started propagating unscientific bent of mind. Various things were put into the academic curriculum which have no scientific basis. Mythologies were taught in the way of history so that the students do not understand the difference between mythology and history. A student of history will not demand the proof, the evidence of what is being taught. Not only that, various things in, were, were propagated as if science was very advanced in the ancient past. Yes, India was for that point of time, for that time, whatever was the advancement of knowledge all over the world in comparison to that, India did make quite a few contributions. It is true. It was in India that the place value system was discovered. It was in India that the modern method of production of steel was invented. It was in India that much of arithmetic, algebra, trigonometry was invented, was discovered. It was in India much of development of astronomy happened. It was in India that fast development of medical science happened. It is true. But in comparison to the knowledge set of that time, if we now believe that that is something to look forward to, then we are actually looking backwards. And that is what is being propagated as something to look forward to. Our institute, one of the apex institutions of this, this, this country, only a few days back received a memo from the, the Ministry of Human Research Development saying that we have to teach our students the advantages of ancient technology. Now look, historically these are important. Historically, the fact that wood steel was invented in India is important, but do you today produce wood steel? Would you make your fountain paint out of that steel? No. Science has advanced. And therefore, you have to go beyond that. So one thing is historical importance, the other is looking forward to something that is in the back. This is being propagated now in a systematic way. I am not talking about the ridiculous things that they talk about. Their minister gave a statement that Darwin's theory is wrong. Not only that, he said as a minister that I will work towards abolishing that from the school curriculum, Darwin, Darwin's theory, which is a pillar of modern science. Our prime minister himself said in a, in a hospital inauguration in Mumbai that the elephant head of Ganesha is sure shot proof that this kind of surgery used to happen in ancient India some 8,000 now things years back. These are the ways our uh, chief minister of Tripura, he said that 
in the days of the mahabharata there was internet why because there was live streaming look these we may laugh at but the people out there is not laughing at them because these people for them are the leaders and they are propagating something that is completely antithetical to science so this is happening and this was increasing the discomfiture among the scientific community many well meaning people were feeling the need to do something some nucleation had to happen so that they would really come forward and make something happen and not only that in our country the support for education is abysmally low why aren't most of the indian population educated because the government has not tried to educate them the support for education is abysmally low look at our schools look at our colleges normal schools normal colleges government funded colleges abysmally bad situation why because there is no funding there so there was a necessity to increase funding and also in scientific research today we do not do research the way it was done say 200 300 years back we need instruments we need apparatus we need money and that money has been cut down year after year so that it led to a very crisis situation in the scientific community the csi the apex science organization that runs some 40 49 research laboratories they declared a state of financial emergency it was a real real bad situation phd students are not getting paid months after months so with this situation we suddenly found that it was not only a problem of india it was also a problem all over the world and the world scientific community gave a call for a march for science in order to highlight the plight that science is is facing now in order to stand for science in order to make vocal the demands of the points that that science is making so there was a march for science all over the world last year 2017 at that time we in our country could not participate at that time because we learned about it pretty late so on 9th august we decided in india we decided to hold a march for science when the call was given it was overwhelming response why because most of the well meaning people wanted something like this to happen so people came forward there was a huge uh, uh, gatherings in all the places where we wanted to do it and through that and there was also another uh, such march for science this year through these marches for science many people in different parts of the country well meaning people who concur with this particular point that something needs to be done science has to be in a state of war with anti science those who agree to it we suddenly found that they are spread all over the country they don't know each other they are not in contact with each other they don't talk to each other yet they are there so there had to be a forum in which they come they exchange opinions and then maybe as they go back this the message is spread all over the country so we decided breakthrough science society decided to convene this conference this conference of a unique kind because normally conferences that happen in the area of science are specialized research conferences in very focused areas while well, here we are discussing society here we are discussing philosophy of science what should be our outlook here we are we are discussing how to take science to the people common masses and when we are criticizing the government for not having a proper scientific education system it is on the scientific community to tell them what should we done this also something that we discussed and then if we are talking about high science then we also squarely have to face the problem of an ethical behavior within the scientific community yes it is happening and then that's also that was also something that was discussed and we the scientific community have to deal with it the scientists are not really isolated individuals the kind of 
view of scientists that we have normally is the is, is a person with a spectacles coming down on the nose and then uh, cocooned in the laboratory doesn't know anything about the society that image of the scientist has been built because most scientists do behave that way we need to come out of that habit that mindset and we need to interact with the society we need to be a part of the society be responsible parts of the society more responsible for everybody else because we are scientists we can see the things that are happening in the in the material world as well as the as well as in society from a scientific point of view we can rationally argue out what does a scientist do a scientist find out the causes of things that happen If something falls we ask why did it fall and then we find the reason why did it fall the moon moves in the sky we ask why so we ask why if there is a some problem in the society we also from the same bent of minds ask why and it is us therefore who are in a position to find out for ourselves why why is there evils in the society why is there inequality in the society why is there so much uh, the problems in the society we are in a position to understand that and therefore it is all the more our responsibility to play a responsible role in the society so in what way to do that in what way should we play a responsible role in the society what can we really do that was the con the, the main focus of the conference to figure out that and i am glad to tell you that through the course of these discussions we have arrived at certain very important insights through which we can really make a mark in the future our aim is to make india a scientifically literate country and we will do it but there has to be a road map just wishing something does not help there has to be a road map and the road map in this case is that we had one set of discussion yes only a small set could attend this conference and uh, in fact we had to restrict people from attending the conferences because the size of the hall was only 500 therefore we had to restrict many people wanted to attend this conference we we, we had been with folded hands who had to say no but we have to reach out to them so we have decided to bring out the proceedings of this conference and i request all this i have already requested the speakers to write up what they said and to send us so that we will bring out the proceedings of the conference but then the message of this conference has to be taken to the grassroots there has to be programs along this line integrating science with society or the individual sessions in the in this this conference these have to be taken up as programs in the colleges in schools in universities in localities everywhere wherever you are wherever you go you have to organize programs on these lines so that a the people who are in the act, in the activity of science they understand what is to be done and the message actually reaches to the common masses we have to take the message of science to the common masses it does not mean we have to really talk about the newton's law and einstein's law to the common masses no it is basically a way of looking at things an approach a world view that is what we need to convey to the common masses but at the same time one important point that was raised in this conference was that please do look at yourself please do look at yourself because we are also a product of this education system we are also products of this society and therefore we are also harboring many of the things that we are seeking to eradicate from the society the unscientific attitude of the scientists themselves was something that was discussed in this conference yes we have to squarely face this problem and we have to uh, deal with this problem the scientific community also has to cleanse themselves of the unscientific bent of mind and unscientific thinking that we do harbor 
So there has to be programs ge geared towards that. And finally, since the time is running out, I would say that in India, there are various science organizations. These organizations may have various things on which we conquer, and there are various issues on which we may not conquer. But now, a time has come when we should set aside the differences and focus on the unity. And through that, and through that, we will forge together a very strong united science movement. And that is what they call of the hour. Right now, unless we take up this responsibility, unless the scientific community takes up this responsibility, the, this, the future of science in this country is bleak. We have to realize that it is a state of war between science and anti-science. Either we win, win or we lose. Unless we fight, we lose. And therefore, we have to fight, and therefore, we fight united. Thank you.